Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I will review the MetPow X5 Pro. This machine has a 600 by 600 millimeter working area. The motion system uses palm wheels on the Y axis, a linear rail on the X axis, and limit switches on both the X and Y axis. The Z axis uses a lever on the laser head for focal length adjustment. The laser module is 33 watts. It combines six 5.5 watt modules for a higher output power. So, we can expect it to cut thicker wood at a higher speed, and we're going to find out for sure later. The frame is a pretty standard aluminum frame formed by four 20 by 40 extrusions. The electronic enclosure is at the front of the machine. It's packed with the controller board and some standard ports. It also has an emergency stop button, flame sensor, tilt sensor, a safety lock, as well as some extension ports for air pump power, an additional 24 volt power, a door sensor, and another external fan port for future expansion. It came with an air assist pump with a 25 liter per minute air flow. As it's powered by the machine, it can be controlled by G-code to turn it on and off depending on if you're engraving or cutting. Besides connecting to the computer to use light burn or laser gerbil to control the machine, it also supports Wi-Fi, and you can use the MKS Laser mobile app to start a job or store it on the micro SD card. For a 33 watt laser engraver with a 600 by 600 working area, the price of $749 seems pretty good. I would like to thank MechPow for sending us this machine to review and for sponsoring today's video. And with that, let's get started. As the working area of this machine is 600 by 600, the box is also slightly larger than a regular laser engraver. All parts are protected with laser cut foam, and the structure of this machine is pretty standard. We have four extrusions to form the frame, the gantry with the cable to the electronic controller box, the 33 watt laser module, the air pump, power supply, four legs to raise the frame, some tools, cables, and some sample materials. Just put the four extrusions together to form the frame. Install the electronic controller box at the front, install two belts for the Y axis, and secure them using washers and screws. Put the laser module on the mount of the gantry and connect the cable and the air tube. For the air pump, connect it to one of the extension ports on the right side of the electronic enclosure. Then connect the power supply, and the machine is now ready to use. As the machine is larger than my table, I will use two 2x4 two foot boards to extend my table. Let's go to Lightburn to set up this machine. As it uses standard laser gerbil firmware, Lightburn can automatically find it. Just leave all the default settings and give it a name. We can now home the machine. It seems like all stepper motors and limit switches are working normally. I will just start with a simple test to engrave my name and cut out a circle to make sure the laser module and air pump are also working. Since I didn't do any material test yet, I will just put some random speed and power parameters that should work with most laser engravers. But there is a problem. I enabled the air assist for cutting, but somehow the air pump didn't start, so the edges are darker than expected. So I just went back to Lightburn to check the settings. By default, Lightburn will use M8 G code to turn on the air pump, but I saw some machines are using M7 by default, so I will just change it to M7 and try again. This time the air pump is on when cutting. The edges are much cleaner compared to the last one, so I assume everything is working and we can do more tests. Let's do a material test on this plywood, starting with the engraving test. I will try to engrave from a 6,000 mm per minute to 12,000 mm per minute speed and from a 10% to 100% power. The text will just use 15,000 mm per minute speed and 50% power.
It seems the text is too light. For the engraving speed, I don't think it would make any difference when the speed is over 10,000 millibits per minute, as there is no room for the laser head to accelerate on such a small square. But it seems the speed between 10,000 and 12,000 still works okay, as we can see different shades on the workpiece. Up next, I will do a cutting test, starting from 200 millibits per minute to 800 millibits per minute on this 3 millimeter plywood. This time, I've increased the power of the text from 50% to 100% of the same 15,000 millimeters per minute speed. The result of this cutting test is pretty good. It can still cut through completely at 800 millimeters per minute, which is really unexpected. I will then try to engrave an eagle at 15,000 millimeters per minute and 100% power and cut it out at 500 millimeters per minute. As this machine is larger than any laser enclosure I have, I have to put a 6 inch duct fan next to it to suck up the smoke. I may just move it outside for other tests later. The cut is clean. The one next to it was the one I engraved last week with the CNC and an add-on laser module without air assist. The cut of this X5 Pro with air assist is much cleaner. The engraving is also alright considering the size of this eagle is small. The back is fairly clean as well, except for those oil marks from the honeycomb bed. I will also engrave a photo on this plywood sheet. I will start with the 12,000 millibits per minute speed with the 100% power. It seems it's too dark, so I will decrease the power to 60% and start again. The photo engraving finishes in 23 minutes and the result is in line with other engravers I've tested. The cut is clean and the back is also clean this time. Next, I will try some thicker wood cutting starting with this quarter inch walnut solid wood. I will use 100% power starting with 150 mils per minute. Finally, it didn't cut through completely at 500 millimeters per minute. It actually almost cut through with just a tiny bit of wood still connected, but I'll just consider it as being able to cut through this quarter inch solid walnut wood as fast as 450 millimeters per minute. Let's try some thicker half inch poplar wood. I will start at 100 millimeters per minute and it cuts through completely. Then I will speed it up to 150. 
It didn't cut through, but it's not far from it, so I would try 125. As expected, it can cut through half-inch poplar wood as quickly as 125 millimeters per minute. Then, I will engrave a Gryffindor logo on the quarter-inch walnut wood board, engraving at 20,000 millimeters per minute and 100% power. The engraving took 14 minutes and 10 seconds. Then, I will cut it out at 300 millimeters per minute with 100% power, which took 1 minute and 12 seconds. The pattern of the Gryffindor logo is clear. I like this kind of engraving more than scanning it line by line like engraving a photo. The edges are also very clean. I will also try some different materials other than wood, starting with acrylic. As dialed lasers can't work with clear acrylic, unless you use markers or marking paper to make it dark, I will just work with black acrylic. I will engrave a unicorn at a 10,000 mm per minute speed at 100% power. The engraving took 2 minutes and 5 seconds. I will then cut it out at 300 mm per minute with 100% power and it took 1 minute and 29 seconds. When working with acrylic, I think using a laser engraver is better than using a CNC as the surface is much cleaner. We don't need to do multiple cleanup passes like on a CNC machine. When reflecting the blue sky, this unicorn looks even nicer. Up next, I will engrave a vector graphic on a slate. Positioning around object is challenging without a camera, but I guess it's still not too bad, besides it being a bit off-center. The marks are clear. I will also try to engrave on this black-coated aluminum card. As we just need to burn off the paint, we can engrave pretty fast at 20,000 millimeters per minute. As this card is thin and light, it moves a little when the machine is working so it looks pretty shaky. It would be better if I used some double-sided tape to fix it on the honeycomb bed. Finally, as this machine has a 600 by 600 working area, I will make a large workpiece to max it out. I will just throw in a cheap $10 2x4 foot panel from Home Depot. When engraving the flag, I found that darkness is a bit light, so I increased the power and light burn. When doing the final cutout, the y-axis bumped into the limit switch and the machine stopped. I just homed it again, and this time I moved it 2mm away from the zero position and started the cutout again. 
For the first few inches, the air pump connector was loosened, so I reconnected it and let the process continue. The initial process wasn't super smooth as the machine triggered the limit switch, and the air pump didn't turn on for a few inches. However, the final result still looks okay, and it's still fun to work with larger workpieces. Okay, let's talk about the pros and cons of this machine, starting with the pros. 1. The 33 watt laser module is powerful. It can cut quarter inch thick solid wood as quickly as 450 millimeters per minute and half inch wood at 125 millimeters per minute. I remember two or three years ago when most machines in the market were just using 1.6 watt to 5 watt modules, trying a 10 watt module was super impressive, but today it seems you need at least a 20 watt module to even call it a laser engraver. You can cut much thicker materials at higher speeds. 2. The power of the air assist pump is connected to the electronic enclosure, allowing you to turn it on and off using G-code. This feature lets you turn it off when engraving and turn it on when cutting. 3. There's a lever on the laser head for you to set the focal length, unlike some machines where you need to keep a gauge or use a 3mm plywood or acrylic. 4. The electronic enclosure is packed with all the safety features you would expect. It includes an emergency stop, a lock, a flame sensor, and a tilt sensor to stop the machine if it drops. Additionally, there are a few extension ports available. One of them is used for the air pump power, while there is another 24 volt power port, a door sensor, as well as an external fan port for future expansion. Now for the cons. One. This machine has a big frame, even bigger than any enclosure I have. I also don't see MechPow offering a matching enclosure for this machine, so smoke management can be a problem unless you have your own ducting system, or you may just need to move your table outside when doing wood cutting. 2. The maximum speed of the firmware is limited to 12,000 millimeters per minute. So, even though it claims the top speed can go up to 28,000 millimeters per minute, unless you go into the firmware and change the parameters, it will still operate at a maximum of 12,000. I actually tried to engrave a picture at 28,000, and the result was still acceptable. However, since the engraving area is not that big, there isn't enough distance for the laser head to accelerate. It's a bit faster, but it didn't make a huge difference compared to 12,000 millimeters per minute. If it needs to work on a large workpiece at the top speed, I would suggest using a thicker 10mm timing belt and gears on the x-axis, as this 6mm belt setup seems a bit flimsy for this big of a machine. 3. The claimed maximum working area is 600 by 600 but I tried, and there's no way you can use the full area, as it will just trigger the limit switches before you reach the full 600mm. I can still make a workpiece at 595 by 595mm, and I guess it's not that far, but it would be better to have an actual working area that's the same as or even slightly bigger than what you claimed. 4. The air assist was set to use M7 Gico to control it, even though most engravers are using M8, and the default settings in Lightburn also use M8. It's not that big of a deal if you know this and just change one setting in Lightburn, but it would still be better to use M8 by default, just like 90% of other engravers in the market. In conclusion, the major advantage of this laser engraver is the price. Generally, a 30 or 33 watt module with a standard 400 by 400 frame would cost around $800, and some of them may not even include the air pump. For $750, you get the same 33 watt laser module, air assist pump, and a larger working area. The overall build quality is solid. It's in line with all regular laser engravers with a frame formed by four extrusion with an extra linear rail on the X axis. At this price point, I can't find any mid-sized 30 to 33 watt laser engravers that offer a better value than the MechPow X5 Pro. While it doesn't seem like the most advanced or the best performing machine available, its $749 price is hard to beat. If you're interested in this MechPow X5 Pro, I put its link and the link to my website auroratechchannel.com in the description below. My website also monitors prices for over 150 popular 3D printers, laser engravers, and CNC machines, and provides detailed specs for easy comparisons. That's it for this video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.